Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Finding Common Battlegrounds. Uh, so tonight it's Ryan and I, Tommy. So we it's just the two of us. Um, we have uh, lost Nathan, our moderator. He's gonna he's bowing out for a little while. So it's just Ryan and I. And we're just gonna do a very casual format tonight. We're just gonna be talking about a number a number of subjects, and we're just gonna. Uh, see where this goes and and just have fun with it. So um, we've got a few uh, topics lined up that we're going to be discussing and we um, just going to enjoy it and have fun. Uh, so first, a word from our uh, sponsor, Lux Bidets. Uh, love bidets. I love, I love getting bidet. It's just the only way to go. <laughs> Uh, I if that's actual yeah. a term. Is that a term? But well, I love. I it. found I found <laughs> that when I'm in the bathroom that I'm not like that doesn't have the bidet. The the my kids' bathroom. I'm always like, oh geez, this sucks, right? And I'm like, I can't wash up. But no. uh, anyway. uh, you need you need another bidet, Tom. Every bathroom should have. I a need bidet. A, yes, exactly. My kids yeah. think they're weird, so that's uh, they, they don't, don't have they, to use it. I mean, it's true. not like they're required to use it. <laughs> They should just have one because then you're safe, right? I have it in both of my bathrooms. Got to have them. The, um, so tonight we're going to go over a few subjects and we're just going to talk. It's very open format tonight. We're just going to be talking casually and there's not really any rules other than we try not to beat each other up uh, uh, too much. Yeah. So um, Ryan, Ryan, you want to introduce yeah. those? So uh, this first topic, um, it popped up into my newsfeed and I thought it was really strange. Um, and it actually, you know, it originally came up because I was thinking we were going to have our old format. Uh, but basically, there is a nationwide push to increase the age at which people can get married. Okay, so there are a, a number of kind of movement, social movement organizations that are pushing to increase this age. Uh, the general sentiment is to protect young women from kind of lecherous men uh who might want to marry them at un, you know young ages um in particular what, what was the word lecherous men lecherous yeah lecherous like creepy old men right so oh. lecherous men um so one of the ways in which some of these marriages play out uh occasionally it's kind of a weird one right is like a an underage girl will be raped and then she gets pregnant and then the family is like well you have to marry the father right so they end up forcing them to marry their rapist right which is like awful in so many ways uh but that's part of this kind of push to like increase the age at which young people can get married and kind of as a bonus since i know you have ties to japan uh this is actually playing out in japan right now too um there's a push to increase the age at marriage uh to 16 in japan from what it is now which is no minimum age. I don't know if you knew that. There is no minimum age at which someone can get married in Japan, which is kind of disturbing. Um, I'm. Yeah. That's actually interesting that they're doing that because, like, I know they're they're there's a big push for them to push marriage. They're trying to get more people married and oh yeah, having babies. So I'm surprised that that's in focus. That's a thing yeah, in focus that's interesting. About. So, so where this popped up is in the state of Wyoming, right? Which is a neighbor state to where Tom is right now in Utah. Uh, they've been pushing to increase the age at marriage to 18. And it turns out there's been a Republican backlash. Um, there has been kind of this push by Republican legislators and Republicans in the state of Wyoming to not increase the age uh, at marriage to 18. Um, so uh, I just wanted to talk about that. I thought, you know, one, like, okay, here's the rationale for why people are trying to increase the age. But two, why why would Republicans be opposing this? And I'm just kind of interested in your take on this, Tom. Like, what what's your thought on this? I definitely have a take uh, on this one. I probably, <laughs> yeah, I, I have a, I, I formed an opinion, but I do, I want to hear your thoughts on it first. And then I'm going to go, oh. and then I'm going to get all over it. Well, okay. So this is a, I think this yeah, why did, why did you pick this? Why like why why did you think it was interesting? Um yeah. So, <laughs> I thought it was interesting. One, it was kind of weird. I am particularly interested in your take because you have two daughters, right? Yeah. So you've got more personal insight on this than I do. I've got a 13-year-old son. Um, I'm gonna say something maybe a little crass that maybe I'll I'll try not to be too crass, right? But um when we had our son. Uh, my next door neighbor, who I love dearly, the guy's amazing. He had two daughters, right? 
And so he's like, oh, dude, you are so lucky that you're having a boy. And I was like, oh, you know, I'm not, I really didn't, don't care whether it's boy or a girl, right? Or, you know, whatever. Uh, and he says, no, no, no. Here's the logic. He says, if you've got a boy, you only have to worry about one penis. <laughs> if you've got a girl, you have to worry about all of them. And I was right. like, yeah, it's a bit sexist, right? But I, I do get what he's saying, right? But it is, it is a bit sexist. Anyway. I, okay, I think so. you told me that. I've actually used that because I, it's <laughs> totally true. That line. Anyway, so my take on this. Um, this gets a little tricky, right? Back when Josh was on the show, we used to wrestle about uh, libertarianism. And the fact that I am pretty libertarian in a lot of ways. And so... In one sense, I don't love government restrictions on like the age at which people can get married because, you know, theoretically, what's the difference between a 17 year old and an 18 year old, right? Like, why do we draw that pretty artificial line? I can get like, okay, a 12 year old, yeah, should not be getting married, right? Like, that's too young. Is there a formal age? So, so from a libertarian standpoint, I'm a little bit kind of like, mm, I don't know that I love this kind of restriction. But then from the other side, I can understand why people would want to push this, right? Um, we don't allow people under 18 to vote, to serve in the military, to do a number of things. Um, we don't consider them to be developed enough to make those decisions. I'm not saying that I necessarily agree with that, but we do have other restrictions in place. And marriage is kind of a big deal, right? Um, so if we're going to restrict what people under a certain age can do when it comes to voting, owning guns, right? Uh, being able to smoke cigarettes, drink alcohol, et cetera. Uh, I think restricting marriage kind of makes sense. Why I thought this was interesting is it wasn't entirely clear why Republicans were pushing against this. So if you read the article that I sent, right? The article is like, why are Republicans pushing against this? What? Why do they want young women in particular? I don't know that it's just young women to be able to marry at younger ages. Um, and I just thought that was kind of interesting. So I, I wasn't sure why Republicans were necessarily pushing against this unless they were just taking a libertarian stance. Um, but I just thought that that was strange, right? So if you're going to push against increasing this age, I think you should have a pretty strong rationale for why you're doing it. And I didn't see a clear rationale for why Republicans were pushing against this. So that's just my take. I just thought it was an interesting article. What do you got? Yeah, the only viewpoint I saw that, that was that they, I think they were saying that they wanted to be an active parent and a, uh, and 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 kind of like an almost an arranged marriage. They were like they wanted to be like if I see my daughter and they're in, in a, I want to be able to push that or not push that and like the kind of like their their prerogative as a parent to weigh in on on the marriage. Mm -hmm. That's all. And it sounded like more like a libertarian argument but maybe sort of like from a fundamental christian standpoint i don't know um if that's who it was but i that was an okay. argument i heard but but uh um yeah i i don't know whatever the, the this this was my big takeaway from it and that's mm -hmm. that you can take you can take you can write any article about anything and make it good or bad and and this is like the the gist you pull out of this is like oh Wyoming Republicans are sick and they want to <laughs> they want to marry young girls and stuff like that and you're like yeah. um but here's the thing so they were one of eight states that doesn't have a law right now right that doesn't have a law that you can marry at any age guess who's the other one one of the other ones California yeah California is I thought they that don't was have a law at all yeah. and so we're like getting after so and it's a wyoming republican mm -hmm. he's trying to push this law and he's like you know it's a little more watered down than some people want but he's just trying to get it through he i guess he already proposed one that was a little stricter now there's one a little more watered down where you can be 16 or 17 with parental consent and get married to someone and this happens right with like a, yeah. a 19 year old boy a 17 year old girl um and so and he's like trying to pass it and is like, oh, and you know, I don't, it, it, it doesn't really go into like how many people are pushing back. It's just like, there's pushback and you're like, okay, but you're like, they're trying to, to protect minors. Right. And yeah. it's like, mm -hmm. that's great. It's a good thing. You know? And that's one of the places that I do feel like we, we can, we're okay. Um, we can still over-regulate, but I, I, but I'm usually okay with getting regulation in place with minors, right. Protecting people who can't 
you know, I don't have a voice for themselves. And so it's like, all right, it's a good thing, you know, and it's like, but they're like, oh, those sick Wyoming. And you're like, meanwhile, in California, some seven year olds marrying a seven year old girl and uh, in every, this is totally legal. And yeah. you're like, but all those Wyoming people, they're yeah. gross. And you're like, okay. So it, this reminded <laughs> me of last, uh, it was this summer. Um, same thing. So there was in St. George, St. George is a city down in Southern Utah, right. kind of in a deserty area. And it's growing like crazy. It's, it's one of the fastest growing cities uh, in the country. And you, you, Utah is the fastest growing state for, in the last 10 years has been the, the fastest growing state. So it is like, it's just gangbusters. It's just exploding. Right. And there was an article, a, a, a news piece, and it was by a major network. I can't remember who, which one did it. And they did this piece on St. George and they're like, and it was very like they're being irresponsible, like they're doing all this growth and they're using all this water. And uh, and and they kept asking like city council people like, well, do you, are you going to cap stuff? Are you going to regulate? And they're like, no, we're just, you know, we're just going to let this play out. And uh, they were like, oh, my gosh. And like what they didn't, you know, and they and I did some I looked at some follow up stuff and I heard some follow up stuff. And it was like um, and, and they actually. St. George is using way less water out of the Colorado than uh, than they are allotted than like has been hmm. divvied up through through the water rights. And right. so like they're actually well within their rights to take more water, but they have it. So they've been the good steward for like the last 25, 30 years. And like, meanwhile, downstream, you've got Vegas and they're like, gulp, 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 <laughs> yeah. right? And they're just like taking all this water and they're like, and no one's saying, it, you know, but they're, no one's saying anything bad about them. And then in fact, they're getting kudos because they were like, Vegas has been, they even, they even mentioned something like Vegas is trying to uh, put in less drought, drought, drought tolerant plants and things like that. Like they're the model citizen, even though they're consuming way more per capita than, oh, wow. than, than huh. Utah was. And it was like, uh, it, you know, cause there was a, there was a follow-up piece I saw in another article and they, they give a more other side, they give more of the other side and they're just saying, yeah, we, we're, we haven't been taking water and we're starting to up our water usage of the Colorado. Right. And it's in the middle of a drought. It's a hot button issue, but it was just like totally painted it one way when, hmm. when it's not, it, it's not so crystal clear, right. They made like Vegas look like the good stewards and St. George was, was these bad players. And uh, it was just like, okay, you know, you're like, you can, you can make anyone look like a villain any, in any way you want. And it's just like, okay. Uh, yeah. so I just think it's funny that, that we paint, we, these, um, articles kind of have like, a a clear uh, bias. Well, but yes. And, and you know, a sh- kind of some shock value and some bias yeah. and the, and, and I just feel like it it's, and no one's going to probably read that deeply into it and get that, extract that out of it or very yeah. few will. And so well, I think it's just the media. Yeah. No, I, I think that's actually a great point. So if you look at, um, the, the slug, right? So that's kind of the name, like the URL for the article. Now that I'm looking at it, the, the URL is Wyoming Republicans fight for their constitutional right to marry children, right? right? right. You're absolutely right. That that's clickbait. There's no question that this is like a clearly biased article. That's absolutely clickbait. Right. right. Uh, and now it may actually be described like I, it's probably true that there's some pushback for this law, but like clearly one-sided, very biased. I'm not even going to try and defend what they're doing. Uh, that said, I do want your take on whether you think your girls should be married under the age of 18. Should be married. Or, like, or should like, be allowed to. Should be allowed to. Should not, be allowed not should. To. Like, like, I'm not trying to force you to marry your girls off, right? Like, like <laughs> should they? Tom, I've got, I've got some people. <laughs> I have someone in mind? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, no. So my daughter just turned 18 a couple weeks ago. And, uh, the other one just turned 16. So, um, and, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, I actually do like that. They put in the 16 year old, 17 year old with parental consent. Cause you know, mm-hmm. stuff happens and, you know, people think they're in love and, and, you know, we, we're, I think it's a weird thing. We see everything from this perspective and, um, from the, the perspective we have nowadays, which is that like, oh my gosh, that's, that's, that's criminal. But that was actually very common 40, 50 years ago. Right. And it's just like, this is not, uh, so it's just like, I think the pendulum will swing the other way a little more at some point. Um, and that's, you know, it's just like, so I don't, 
I think it's fine if they want to get, if they want to get like, I would definitely have some discussions with them. Right. But if they were like, no, we're doing this. I'm like, okay. Right. So if your 16 year old came to you and said, dad, I'm in love. Uh, I want to get married, but I need your consent. Would you give it? I mean, like we would talk a bit more than that, (laughs) but like, yeah, yeah, go ahead. See you, honey. Have fun. Really? Um, like you would, uh, would it marry think, who the person think is? About, think about it this way, right? Think about how many 17 year old girls are in a uh, consensual sexual relationship with some guy. Right. Sure. Right? I get that. And yeah. it's like, uh, what's the difference? Right. And you're, I mean, not, not me. What's the difference, but like the consequences of both are pretty, are almost are very similar. And right. I almost okay. rather you're like, okay, you want, you're convinced you want to have married, you want to get married and you're convinced as the person go ahead. Right. And uh, so it's, it's, you know, there, hmm. there's plenty of people that are, that are doing, what do they, what do they call it? They're getting the milk and they haven't bought the cow. So it's like, <laughs> so said they want to buy the cow. Okay. Buy the cow. <laughs> get the milk. Interesting. Okay. So you would be, okay. what about <clears throat> under 16? I mean, now it's uh, going to, yeah, that's, yeah, I, I, no, I don't, no. So 16 just, is like your minimum cutoff, like absolutely not be under 16, but 16 with parental consent all the way up to 18. And then of course at 18, like they're their own adult. They can do what they want. Yeah. Like I, so here's the thing I have, like my younger daughter is extremely independent, extremely independent. And it's, it's hard just to know where she is half the time. And, you know, I have no, I can only imagine the crap she's doing. And so it's just like, you know, it's, I, I, I can only kind of just help guide it a little bit, but if she came to me and was like, I want to get married and this is the person that I'd be, I mean, we'd have a, quite a few talks about it, but if it, she was convinced <laughs> then I'd just be like, okay. Huh. Um, so. See, and interestingly uh because i i do think we should probably flip this around um we're really only talking about like protecting girls yeah. so let's flip that right would you do the same thing with boys so and this becomes a little bit more relevant for me right so i've got a 13 year old son he's not even interested in, in anybody at this point right we don't, i don't know what his sexual right. idea is right. so like meh whatever um but like he's, he's expressed like zero interest in any of this at this point. Right. So 13, you know, I'm sure other kids are doing that at this point, but my son is just absolutely not interested. Um, I would be astonished if he came to me at 16 and was like, yeah, I want to get married. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm sure you'd be shocked. Right. Yeah. I'd be blown, blown out of like blown, blow my mind shocked. Yeah. Right. But would mm-hmm. But if it, what if he was like, Hey, I'm sleeping with this girl. You, you'd probably be like, Oh, okay. Yeah. Go for right? it. Like, you know, are, are you being smart about it? Are you using you, protection? Like you, you wouldn't be is shocked, she consenting. Right? No, I wouldn't be shocked at 16 right. if he's, uh, and we have an open enough, an open enough relationship that I've told him like, Hey, you know, please tell us so we can make sure like we buy you condoms and like, she's consenting and like, everything's on the up and up. So everything's fine. I'm totally okay with that. Right. And I get that like, there's uh, moral differences probably between your, you and I on these issues and that's perfectly fine. But um, I would hope that it's a very open relationship and I would have no problem with that. But if he came to me at 16 and said, yeah, okay, I want to marry her. I'd be like, okay, mm, we're going to wait a couple of years for that. Right. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't think, I mean, it would be a real struggle for me to say, yeah, go ahead. At 16. I mean, he hasn't if, finished high school. But if he right? was like, I'm sleeping with her. I'd be fine with I'm, that. Yeah. And you'd be like, I'm okay. Wait two years. But you then can you keep can sleeping her. with her. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would be okay with that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I mean, because in my mind, like, you know, it doesn't matter, right? Like that, that the government said you were legally married. Now it's okay to have sex, right? Like in my mind, that's kind of a... a, a it makes no sense, right? It's like some bureaucrat somewhere has signed a piece of paper and now sex is okay, right? Like, meh, that means nothing to me. Um, But the idea of marriage, right? Like, it's a legal contract. So it's, it's a legally binding thing that gets a bit more complicated, 
right? That that's why I would okay. say like, eh, give it a little. Because I think it right? gets pretty complicated when you start sleeping with someone. Like, there's a lot of emotions <laughs> and a lot of yes. Uh, you're dealing with high stakes relationship, uh, the high your, the highest stakes of the relationship, and, and uh, a lot of you know a lot of feelings, emotions, and you mm-hmm. know, and of course, pregnancy and all that stuff's on the table. Yeah. Uh, if and uh, so it's just like and and so it's interesting that you don't have qualms about that, but you have qualms about them committing to each other <laughs> and, uh, uh yeah so. which is totally fair right like i think that's a valid point to point out like you know where my qualm is right. making a legally obligate like uh, making a legal contractual relationship versus like we're in a relationship um because okay uh you and i we grew up in morgan utah right um, we were both dating girls uh god i'm trying to think like how young were we when we were dating girls by eighth grade for sure right yeah, probably yeah yeah sure. so and my son is in eighth grade right now mm-hmm. uh which again he's not interested um we had emotions right like i had emotional connections you had emotional connections mm-hmm. um so the emotional stuff like yeah that's life right like i'm not too concerned about that stuff because People have relationships. Like we're always going to have relationships. Relationships begin, they end, they get complicated. Um, I, I'm fine with him wrestling with all of those things. Uh, I think your point is totally valid. That I'm like, I'm less concerned about him having sex than about getting married. I think that's <laughs> fair. Like that's a fair point, right? Uh, but I, I think that is intriguing. That I'm like eh, legally obligated yourself to like a relationship. I think is a bit bigger of a deal than just having sex. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. That is interesting. Yeah, no, it's fair. Okay. Um, yeah, those are my only thoughts on that one. Anything else you want to add about? No, no, we're good. I'm no, good. We move on to our next one. Yes, let's do it. Okay. Um, we're getting closer, right? It's 2023 at this point. It's the beginning of 2023. There is a 2024 presidential election. And obviously there's a lot of talk. So at this point, there are just two Republican contenders, right? Um, who have put their names in formally, uh, Trump and Nikki then Haley. Nikki Haley. Thanks. Yeah. I, I knew who she was, right? I was like, ah, oh, yeah. but I forgot her name. Former governor of South Carolina. Is that right? I and think also, so. Yeah. And then she was also uh, the U.S. representative to the United Nations, I think, um, mm-hmm. for a while. Um, so those are the two formal ones. Um Obviously, lots of talk about Ron DeSantis. We're not going to bring him up. We're ignoring Florida politics for one episode of this podcast, (laughs) Uh, maybe for now. But uh, yeah, we'll we'll bring him up later. Um, There's also talk, and Joe Joe Biden is doing nothing to dispel this, that he's going to run for re-election. And well, he's 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 said it right. He's like, yeah, I'm going to run right when he when he's been at question. I mean. And, and I don't know that he's like definitively said, I'm all in, right? But he's he has certainly not disabused anybody yeah. of the possibility, right? He's not right. like, no, I'm not going to run. Right. Uh, I don't know that he's fully said he's absolutely yeah, going to run. I don't think but... he's announced, right? Yes, but, right. But... Um, if he but, re- uh, Unless something yeah. happens, he is the, he's going to be the guy, right? He's Well, he, he yeah. Unless say, he, something happens, he, it sounds like he's going to run for the re-election. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as someone who's on that side, right? So I'm I am left of center. Well, we're just gonna be clear about that. Uh I'm not sure how I feel about Joe Biden running for office. Um, and you know, part of this plays out that like, yes, he certainly makes gaffes. Um, and those gaffes are probably at least partially related to age. He's always made gaffes, but I think they're getting <laughs> a little bit worse. Um if he were to run, I think he's already the oldest president we've ever yeah. had, right? So yeah. if he ran for re-election, he would by far be the oldest president. He would beat his own had. record. Yes. Yeah. Um, by continuing to suggest <laughs> that he's going to run for office in 2024, is he harming Democrats' chance to win the 2024 presidential election? That, that's uh, my question. And I, I don't know the answer to it, but I'm, it's got me thinking quite a bit. All right. All right. This is, are you, do you want to have a take? I'll, I'll give you my yeah, take. Do it. Go, go, go. Okay. Yeah. This is interesting. So as far as his policy change, you know, with the side of the policy he's on, 
obviously I don't agree with his policies, right? Because he's, yeah. he's left and, and I'm right. I mean, he's, and, and, but as far as his, I mean, like a, the Hunter Biden scandal aside uh, and maybe the handling of the, uh, some of the Afghan war stuff, I think he's done a decent job. Like yeah. he's just, he just, he's just kind of there. Right. And, mm-hmm. you know, and he makes gaffes. Sure. But, um, but he's just sort of doing stuff and like, right. and that's and the, honestly, that's, that's probably the best you want out of a president. Yeah. Like just don't not step a scandal in, ridden don't, president. Yeah. Don't step in anything. Right. And, uh, <laughs> and you know, or don't get us into a war. That's what I'm trying sure. to say. It's like, That'd don't get good. us into a thing. Don't get us into this. Don't, don't make an incredibly bad move. And so I, um, uh, you know, who knows how the Ukraine thing is going to go. I'm, I am worried about that. Right. Yes. But it's sure. like, uh, I, think i don't think he'll run i don't think he's going to run for re-election i don't but, think he will either but, but he think keeps he's saying he's smart going to. i think he's smart to just keep that all that noise at bay right and oh, i don't explain. know i don't explain I don't what you mean by a, that right I explain what you mean a, by that yeah I, and i don't know if that's a strategy or if he's just kind of doing that at, if he really thinks he might run but um I'm just saying if he's like, I'm not running <clears throat> like the media just be like crazy. Right. They'd be right. like, Oh, and, and then, and then like, who's it going to be? Right. Yeah, who's it going to yeah. be? And everyone's talking about it. And is it Kamala Harris? And, and, and <clears throat> is it, um, and, and everything will be looked through that lens about everything he does will be looked through that lens. And so it's just like, keep the noise down. And um, if, if the economy does what I think it's going to do, uh, I think, He's not going to be, he's not, he, he would be stupid to run and cause he won't, he'll become even more unpopular than he is. And, um, and I think, uh, uh, and so, and I, he'll just get somebody else. Right. And I just think it'll be a no brainer at that point. But, uh, but right now I think it's smart just to, just to shut it down. Just to like, don't just like, yeah, sure. I might be running hmm. I mean, or, or no plans not to run. And, uh, right. And and I think the fact that he hasn't said much about it, he, he's only when he's been like kind of confronted as he said stuff. There's some just sound bites of him saying stuff, yeah, just kind of off the cuff. But otherwise, he hasn't really been talking about it much. And so it's like um, he, he hasn't been like defending points or anything. Like right. I'm smart enough and I can do this and stuff like that. So <laughs> so I think uh, so I think I don't think he will. But like I think he's smart just to kind of like leave it, just kind of make people think that he is. That's my it's thought. Interesting. No, I, I actually like that, right? Uh, um, one, I appreciate you as someone who is right of center saying that you think he's been fine <laughs> as a president, right? I, I think we actually probably feel very similar about him. Um, obviously, we talked way back when in that, you know, uh, evacuation from Afghanistan was a complete and utter disaster. I totally get that. I'm on board with that. Um, and then, of course, you know, the, the gas and other things. But the fact that he's been a president with so few scandals, right? Yes, I get the Hunter Biden thing, but like otherwise, like it's a pretty benign presidency where you just don't hear much about him. I think um, that's what happens when you're this old. You just like you there's you don't have enough energy to <laughs> to be, you know, having I mean, he's probably not even sleeping with, with his yeah. wife, let alone anybody else. <laughs> adult so. <laughs> adult porn stars or whatever. <laughs> right. Uh which is totally fair, right? Like I, I get that. Um yeah, I mean the the when even uh, Trump with Stormy Daniels wasn't that that was before his he yeah was that was before right? he was president so yeah like, so it was a long time before his president totally. um you know what I what I was gonna say you know during the Trump administration uh, we do listen to the news every morning on our Amazon Echo device right we have it set up to play like uh, Associated Press news and BBC news and um, NPR news right. Uh, And it was like almost every morning there would be some new scandal about Trump. And I get like, that's a media bias. I'm not even going to try and defend that. But when the highlight about the president is that his wife went in to have a couple of um, skin things looked at by a dermatologist and one of them was cancerous, right? Like Mm -hmm. that's the extent of like the shocking news about the president is the president's wife, right? Right. I am so okay with that. Like that that's the kind of president that I kind of want. Somebody who mm. is just kind of doing the job and staying out of scandals, right? Right. So I, I, I said yeah. this once to a at a caucus meeting to some young kid who was there and he's like his first caucus meeting and I said it's kind of boring. 
I'm like, it, we got done. And I'm like, what'd you think? And he's like, oh, it was good. I'm like, it's kind of boring. He's like, yeah, it was kind of boring. I'm like, I'm like, to be honest, you kind of want your politics to be boring. Like the the places where politics is exciting are not places you want to live, right? <laughs> like who's going to, you know, oh, you know, Haiti, no president. He got assassinated. He two, got assassinated. Two, two yeah. years ago and we still don't have a president. Well, that's interesting, yeah. right? Oh, that's yeah. a story. But yeah, the hate, story you want. I know Haiti is literally begging for us to invade their country, oh, right? Like, like you don't want to be in Haiti right now. <laughs> totally, right? So it's yeah. it's just like uh, that's uh, like low key, you know. And you always and it's kind of funny because it's the same thing. You watch you watch Fox News and and they're always looking for something something, right? Mm-hmm. And they're like, and you can you can gauge by. I do this this other way too. When 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 it was Trump, it was like gauging by what the big story is about yeah. Biden today. You can tell that's like there's not they got nothing, right? They got it's nothing. Like, oh, look, he was stumbling over this thing and he couldn't say <laughs> these words. Oh, and you're like, that's it, huh? You Another know, another way with, news day. Yeah, yeah. So it was the same with Trump. It's like, oh, he spelled this thing wrong. Oh my goodness, yeah. right? And he he called, he, co- he called coffee covery or something. And like that, coffee you know? and. And he had yeah. a hard time going down a ramp and he spilled, you know, he used two hands to drink his water or whatever. Yeah. Right. Like, and you're like, this yeah. is the best you got today. All right. Okay. There's nothing, nothing going on. That's right. fair. Um, no, I like your take on this. Right. So I wonder if it's legit that like Joe Biden has actually thought about this. Cause I think, right. you know, at some level know. he's, he is not stupid. I mean, to be in politics that long, to be as successful as you are, you can't be a stupid political operator. Um, so at some level, you know, there's some political chops there and maybe it's his advisors who came up with this, but the idea that he's just like holding, mm-hmm. um, you're right. It does keep the the media like those sharks, right? That feeding frenzy of like, oh, who's it going to be then? It just yeah. totally keeps him at bay if he's just like, meh, maybe, right? Like, I'm just not thinking about that. I'm doing my job right now. I mean, you yeah. think about it like the year, the election year, they spent Ugh. an entire year talking about who's going to be the next president, yes. right? Like an entire year of just dedicated to network, just like uh, uh, program after program. And you're like, the sooner, like the, the more we can hold that off, the better, because they'll go nuts, right? Yes. They'll talk about that forever. Uh, yeah. so. And we're, what, a, a year and eight months away from actually having that decision. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah I have no problem with that. Um, interesting. I actually really like your take on this, Tom. I think that's a Good. really insightful take. Why are we just agreeing? We need to We're disagree. Just, People's just not going like... to tonight. <laughs> All right, let's move yeah. on to we got one our, more. Let's see how we do. Yeah, our our third and final topic, which is kind of a combination of multiple topics that uh, popped out to me that I thought was kind of interesting. So I'm going to mention DeSantis a little bit in Florida, but it's in the broader kind of context of something. So, uh, and I think we've talked about this before. Um, DeSantis is not the only one. There have been a number of governors and states in kind of more conservative states that have been relocating migrants, right? Obviously, DeSantis got eh, a bit of trouble. He got sued over this. And there's been a lot of controversy about the migrant flights that he sent, right, to New England. Um, But this just came back into the news because in my completely Republican controlled state, right, they just passed legislation giving DeSantis tens of millions of additional dollars to continue to do these migrant relocation things. Mm. And so I was like, oh man, like that's, that seems problematic to me. But then literally like the same day that that passed, the BBC had a news story that I was, I was blown away by, right? Because you hear Democrats all the time are like, this is so unethical moving these migrants around. They're basically political pawns. No one cares about the people. It's all just this political thing. And then the BBC comes out with a story saying that the city of New York is busing migrants <laughs> to the border of Canada to try and get them out of the state. Yeah. And I was like, what? The hypocrisy here is just stunning, right? They're literally putting them on buses, giving them bus fare, giving them you know enough money to get to the border with Canada so they can cross that border and then they become Canada's problem. That's like, what? what is going on here? Right. right. Um, so I'm I'm interested in your take on those two issues in particular. Yeah, it's this is interesting because um, I think 
you know, I do think there's a border crisis and I do think there's, there's a big problem there. And I, I am frustrated that, that we, I, I am actually a fan of build the wall. Like, like we need to control the flow that's going through there. And, and I, I actually thought Trump's was brilliant at the Mexico, keeping them from coming up through Mexico, having Mexico enforce basically their border, which helped our border. I, I thought that was a great idea. And, uh, and it, it kept all the Central Americans coming through. Um, and so it's interesting because um, the, uh, the, uh, there was a there was an article about they were talking about the reaction and it was from a it was a conservative point of view and they were going they were interviewing people in Martha Stewart after the bus had been delivered with a bunch of migrants right and it was a so big Martha's PR. Vineyard not, sorry, not Martha sorry. Stewart that, that would be even better though if it was yeah. Martha Stewart's they house. send them all to Martha Stewart's house uh, yeah Martha's Vineyard yeah I could tell you were like what does he mean there yeah uh, it took me a second I was like did you say Martha Stewart yeah anyway and, and, sorry and sorry. like so it, they're interviewing some people and they were just like clueless uh, like their answers were so it was they were like we don't have the resources to handle this kind right. of stuff and we don't we're not we're not set up for this kind of thing and we don't have jobs we're not like you know this and that and they're like 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 texas does like like you know like florida does i mean they they do out of mere necessity they're trying to facilitate all these people mm-hmm. they are i don't think people understand they are so overwhelmed with like the, I mean, there were just people upon people upon people that are trying, you know, they're way beyond trying to help anyone or like hand out water bottles to anybody. It's just, there are so many people pouring across those borders and trying and then kind of getting into the system, right. That it's like, like El Paso is like, it is more immigrants than it is uh national. I, I don't know if that's true, but like, um, I'm just saying it is, they're inundated, like just mm-hmm. inundated, like, and nobody has any, like, and so they do this uh, and it was total PR stunt, but I think there is a legitimate, very legitimate gripe there. And I think all this story does is just, uh, you know, galvanize and justify like or just it just proves that like that it's it's a problem right and like that new york's like oh what what do we do ship them off right somewhere else and uh that's um i i'm yeah i'm i'm very frustrated with that with the whole like migrant situation it's very frustrating and so i totally i you know i don't know so it's just like yeah of course it's that that one's that's something that should come up in my feed, right? Because that's the kind of story. I'd be like, yeah, yeah, right. But uh, <laughs> um, so I, I don't even know what to say other than like, yeah, totally. It's 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 the, it is hypocritical, but um, but yeah, it, it's a total problem. I think. Okay, so um, this gets it like the the final piece that I had added in here that I think is kind of interesting. This is a New York Times article talking about the. The issue of, okay, so so Biden has obviously come under a lot of criticism because, and it gets tricky, right? Obviously, one of the first things that he does when he takes office is he's like, we're not going to build the wall. We're not going to follow Trump's policies. And very quickly, that does translate into, and I think this is fair, it translates into a surge of people who are like, oh, now is my time yeah. to get into the United States, right? So but I think that's generally true that that does play out that way. Um, And so we do get this massive surge. And that's kind of ignoring the fact that there are, whenever we're dealing with migration issues, there are push and pull factors, right? This is how demographers think about this, um, that there are factors that are pushing somebody out of a country and there are factors that are pulling people into a country, okay? So it's not like uh, a bunch of people in the US are trying to migrate to Venezuela right now, right? Like we have no interest in migrating to Venezuela because Venezuela is a bit of a shit, shit show, right? Like they've got a disastrous government policy. They're like, people can't even get enough food. So it's actually the inverse, right? People are being pushed out of Venezuela. And of course they're seeing the US or potentially Canada and saying, that's where I want to go. So our policies here in the US are kind of, um, What's the right term for this? It's not like they're ignorant of that. Uh, they are, right? But I don't think ignorance is the right word. They're they're just not taking into account the push factors that are trying to, like Venezuela is a disaster, right? Like right. we know this. 
and people want out. They want out of that country. And of course, all the surrounding countries have taken literally millions of Venezuelans. Right. Um, what obligation do we have to take them? And so by what, what ends up happening, of course, is Biden initially kind of changes the policy. Then he realized, wow, there is a big group of people trying to get in. So now he's actually kind of reinstated some of these policies. He's trying to crack down on this because of a lot of political pressure. And what that article was saying, right? So that article was from January, was what obligation does the U.S. have towards the human rights of these individuals who are asylum seekers and refugees, right? Because um, if they're just migrants, right? Like there, there are multiple classes of people who are trying to move from countries. A migrant is somebody who's not under any pressure to leave their country from like, they'll be killed if they stay, or, you know, there's a war or something like that. Yeah, it could be difficult, right? Their life could be harder there, but they're not going to die if they stay. Right. Whereas yeah. a refugee or an asylum seeker they're literally like their life is being threatened for one reason or another, and they have a very strong push factor to get out of that country. So if we're basically saying like, no, nope, whether you're a refugee, asylum seeker, or just a migrant, all of these rules apply to you. You don't get to come into the country to seek asylum status, to be a refugee, or even a migrant, right? Um, are we violating their human rights by doing that? And that, that, I think, is an interesting question. I, I'm interested in your take on this. Right. This is so interesting. It's like, <clears throat> I mean, as, as far as it's so nuanced. I'm, I'm to, in, who Who is, it's, it's just like what you were saying. Who is actually a threat, at like their life-threatening situation versus who just wants to make a better life, right? Who's just seeking a better yeah. life? Yeah. And I would say, you know, of the the it's a small group that's actually that they're they're in danger mm -hmm. that that are crossing the border right now um i i'm i can confidently say that i don't have any stats and i don't know surveys and sure, anyone and that. anyone's gonna lie right they mm -hmm. can even just be like oh yeah i'm in a lot of danger just let me through right. um <clears throat> and i don't even um and i don't think there's very any kind of substantial verification process right to be like are you really in danger oh yeah i'm in a lot of danger okay <laughs> Uh, you know, it's like, what, what are we showing to prove that? So it's like, <clears throat> yes, uh, we want to take, we want to help people out a hundred percent, but like at what point, um, you know, there was a video that was done about talked about migration and it was talking, it showed like the population of the world and the population of the United States and like how much we could take, like how it was basically saying like, we can't, take everybody right it's like we no, can't, take, we can't take everybody right <clears throat> and and like what is a what is an appropriate amount right what is mm -hmm. a good amount and it's something like a uh, i don't know the latest stats but it was like a one a hundred it's over a hundred thousand are getting over the border every month and so we're getting like a million plus and i think we're up to like 30 million in illegal immigrants uh that have come into the country at that would be really uh, high it used to be about 14 million let me check the numbers yeah I'm just, keep, I going, used to, keep going i threw another 10 million on there because it because i that stat was like because I, I i remember it being like 14 million like 15 years ago yeah like so, 10 years ago yeah and i did see the stat that was like it was like 100 and i think we had broken a record what it was like a year and a half ago of like 144,000 in a month and so if like at that rate that's over a million a, a year that are coming in so uh you know it's like <clears throat> and, and the fact of the matter is we don't know because they're coming in illegally right and uh it's like we've that's if, if we're at 30 that's 10 percent of the, the the population of the united states right it's like at what point does it, uh, what do they say in, uh, so there was some stat about like import third world country become a third world country. Right. And you're just like, mm. uh, that's, you know, that, that we're not helping anyone anymore. And that's kind of what was the point I was trying to make with El Paso is like, it's, it's, they're inundated. They're, they're not, there's no one handing out water bottles when they come in and be like, welcome, let, let me get you, let me get your paperwork going and let's get you signed up here. It's just like, Oh, get in line. Cause you know, there's like, 20 families ahead of you that are trying to get that same job and um, get on that same truck going up to Utah or wherever. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's, I think it's just a massive problem. It is just pouring through the, like, just, it's like, it's like your basement's flooding and you're just, <laughs> we're just like, whatever. Uh, <laughs> it's, I think it's a big problem. And so, uh, and, and it's not even that, like, if you look at it from the 
I, I def- definitely take it from the justice point of view, but like from the compassion point of view, right. It's like these people come in and they're just like, they're always under the radar. They're like less likely to call the police. They're less likely. They don't have ID. They're not voting. Right. right? Yeah. And they're, not, they're not committing crimes. Yeah. Um, not For the reporting most part. crimes. Right. Yeah. I mean, they're they're usually good people. I'm just yeah, saying, they're usually more lawful, so they're less likely yeah. to commit crimes. The mm-hmm. data do support that, but mm-hmm. they're but they're not. Um, I think they get taken advantage of yep, in, in many ways, and and it's just like there's just all these um, different things. It's like I wish it would be great if if we could be ready. If we had a secure border, we could take the time to vet a lot of these people through, welcome with open arms, get them into a system and a program that would that would actually help them and improve their lives, and but but also have them come in through the front door and we know who they are and you know they're paying pay taxes learn learn the the, the language right and and assimilate into our culture and and like do just we that's what i'd like to see right as opposed yeah. to the current situation that would be an ideal world okay so i have some thoughts here so one i did just look this up uh pew has estimated right and this is based on u.s census bureau data that currently in the u.s about 40 to 44 million people were not born in the u.s Hmm. okay but then they break that down they say of those about 20.7 million are naturalized citizens Okay, so this is lawful immigrants, and another 12.3 million are lawful permanent residents. Hmm. So it's actually like more than three-fourths, so something like 77% are actually here legally, and 23% are not, which translates into about 10 to 11 million people who are not here legally. That's the current number. Yeah. Um, and again, those are kind of best estimates based on U.S. Census data. So uh, I think that's interesting. One... I didn't realize that it was 40 million people are, you know, were not born in the U.S. So, and it, they also do just start out this this kind of report that they did saying the U.S. has more immigrants than any other country on the planet. So mm-hmm. to, to that point, I think that's a really good point. Um, Canada often gets a lot of credit for taking immigrants because they do take a lot of immigrants, but we actually have more immigrants if those numbers are accurate, right? Which I think they are. If we have 40 million immigrants, that's more than the entire population of Canada. Right. Right. <laughs> Which is pretty like that, that helped put the numbers in perspective. That's more than the entire it, population of California. Right. You so think about it. You, state. you think about it. We're the richest country in the world. Right. And like, that's, we are naturally going to have people wanting to come in here. Right. That's just natural, right. naturally going to happen. And so I actually think that stats higher than that, um, that the, of, of illegal immigrants. Um, but, and I think just by, they're going to be very hard to survey because, Sure. Uh, get accurate yeah. data, and, and maybe they're trying to account for that. I don't know, but um, but it's so yeah that 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 doesn't surprise me at all. It's just it we this it's a very broken system. I think that mm-hmm. we have right now, and it, it 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 would be um it would be good to improve it. And I don't know what's driving Biden. Like, is there political pressure for him to ratchet things down? I don't yes. know. Right? Yeah, there is. From a who? Lot. He's getting. Mm-hmm. Uh, from Republicans, actually. So I think he sure. he does listen to that criticism. Um, and you can see this in other actions that he's taken, right? So one, he has tried to restrict what's going on on the border. And we'll come back to the human rights issue because I think there's another complicating factor there. But um, like shooting down that balloon, um, Republicans were losing their minds. Like, why aren't you shooting this down? Why aren't you shooting it down, right? And then, of course, he did. And then he shot down three more things and we don't even know what they were, right? Like, right. we don't think there were spy balloons. There were like you know, old high school experiments that like, Jimmy's were just giant around. birthday balloons <laughs> yeah, gone, gone wild. <laughs> Who knows what they were? This is kind of fascinating. Uh, but I think a lot of that was political pressure that drove him to <clears> then become <throat> even more strict than we've really ever been on shooting down these effectively UFOs, right? These unidentified flying objects. Um, right. So I think he does respond to that kind of political pressure. I think my camera just went out of focus. We'll get it back. Maybe. Eh, sorry. Um, so the, the one that I wanted to bring up is just like connecting this, right? So um, I do read, I've mentioned this before on the podcast, I read the BBC as my primary source of news. Then of course I read my local paper um, and then I you know get random news here and there. Uh, the BBC talks an awful lot about our immigrations in the U.S., our immigration issues in the U.S. They do occasionally highlight the immigration issues in Europe, but mm-hmm. not to the same extent as they do in the U.S. 
It's, and I that's think that's interesting. interesting. So they, and obviously they do talk about, um, there are a lot of boats of people coming from Africa and from the yeah. Middle East trying to get into Europe. And of course those periodically sink uh, kind of like with Cuban, you know, in, immigrants, they sink and people die, which is horrendous, right? I, like I never want to minimize the the awful tragedy that is the loss of those lives. But then I kind of turn around and I think, you know, we do get a lot of crap in the US about not taking enough immigrants, uh, not taking enough refugees, not taking enough asylum seekers. And I'm not trying to necessarily defend like us pushing back on that. But then I flip this around and I think about France. And I don't know how much you know about France, but France is really strong on this issue. And you mentioned this of assimilation. They will take some migrants, right? Obviously, they take migrants, they take refugees, they don't take tons, they don't want to take tons. But they work under the assumption that if you're going to be in France, you are going to be French. Right. Um, that's just the assumption. Like that's just the way it is, right? That if you're going to be here, you have to assimilate. And I think that's true in a lot of other European countries. That Germany is probably a bit of an exception, right? Like Germany is actually okay taking in lots of immigrants. They've taken in tons. But even in like the Scandinavian countries, your Norway and Sweden. If you're going to, you know, go to those countries, which they'll take a very small number, they don't take hundreds of thousands a year, they take tens of thousands a year. The assumption is you will assimilate, you will adopt our values, you can keep your religion, right? But you're going to adopt our values, you're going to act like everybody else acts, you're going to learn the language, and you're going to get a job eventually, we're not just going to fund you indefinitely. Well, this is interesting because it makes me think of like the U.S. gets flack for everything in the world, right? And we get criticized, uh, and it's usually by our, ourselves, right? It's usually, mm -hmm. and I feel like it's a lot from the left. It's criticizing America, and this is, and we do a lot, lot of really good stuff. It's it's the the one thing I it makes me, this makes me think of is you um we always talk about racism. Oh, the you, the U.S. is so racist. We're so racist, and and like then you'll go to, like to China. And you'll see what like the Chinese will do to like some minority group, right? And you're the like, Uyghurs, yeah, yes, the Muslim Uyghurs, Uyghurs, is, Uyghurs yeah. is the is a great example. But like, but like you'll talk, you'll if you talk to them and like the way they talk mm -hmm. to other people, and they're like, oh, that guy's black, da da da, and he's da da da, and they're and they're extremely racist, and it's very yeah. casual in the way they talk. I've heard this over and over and over again, and like from Chinese, from from these Japan groups, from is a great example. You Japan. don't get more exclusive than. Japan, right? They don't want anybody in. <laughs> and and the, and they're very yeah, and they're very condescending to all these groups. Yep. And you're like, and you're like, oh, we're not, we're actually doing a decent job, right? We're doing a decent job. Are we exceptional? No. I, maybe not, but like we're but we're doing all right. Like we're making strides and we're not as we're not, you know, it always makes it sound like we're the worst country in the world. And we're like, right. we're actually doing pretty well. And like I feel like the same with migration, right? Like we're I, you know, we're trying to take migrants, right? Trying, we are trying to help them out. And I think if you talk to anybody, they will say, yeah, we'd like to have people come in and help. We just want it to be, to, we want it to look a certain way, right? And I guess that's the nuance of like, what is, what looking a certain way is. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, and to be fair, right? Like under Trump, he did cut down the, the legal migration numbers to almost nothing. Right. So he really did do that under Biden. He bumped that back up. And for, you know, the previous generation before that, we were accepting 70 to 100,000 plus refugees, asylum seekers a year. So we were consistently bringing people in. There were caps, right? We've had caps for hundreds of years, actually. And those caps have, let's just admit, they've been racist, right? So we, at one point, we had too many people coming from China. So we're just like, nope, no more Chinese. We're not going to allow Chinese people, right? Um, we tend to favor people from Europe. So we do tend to favor specific groups that we want. So we actually will put caps on migrants from different countries at different levels, which I think is pretty fascinating as well. Um, but you're right. I think, I think the general point is the U.S. does allow refugees, asylum seekers, and migrants into the country. Um, one of the ones that I did want to kind of give a specific example, I'm not going to name his name because I don't want to you know, name anybody's name on this podcast, but uh, there was a student at my university who played soccer with us, right? We were talking about that pickup game that I play uh, a few days a week, um, who is from Iran, okay? So he came to the US uh, to go to school, 
right? So he came to the US. I think he had some family connections in California or whatever, but I don't know how he ended up here in Tampa. But he was at my university, ended up getting a degree in finance, then got a master's degree in finance and ended up eventually landing a job. But um, for a while after he got his undergraduate degree, he was technically here illegal, illegally, but he applied for asylum status because while he was here, he converted from Islam to Christianity. Okay. And so he converts and then he applies? Yes. And that, okay. okay. And his logic is if I return to Iran where leaving Islam is punishable by death. Ah, uh, got it. I'm now right? in danger. Yes. Yeah. So what about somebody like my buddy, right? Who played soccer with me? Um, you know, he came here legally under a student visa that was all right. above board. He converts. And I, I don't want to say like he converted just for that. Right. I think his conversion was actually very genuine, but he converts and then he's like, whoa, you know, this is actually a tool to keep me in the country. So he did in fact apply for asylum status. Um, and the tricky part is historically up until like this point, right? Like the last five years, people who applied for asylum status would get into the country and then apply for asylum status. And now what we're saying is you can't come into the country. You have to apply for asylum status outside the country. Mm -hmm. So is that okay? Right. Like, and this gets back to that human rights question of like, what do we do with my buddy? Right. Like he's here, he, you know, finishes school, he's converted, he applies for asylum status. Do we send him back to Iran while we debate whether he gets asylum or not? Right. Yeah. It's all these little tricks and nuances. Yeah. Um, the, the, and either way you're doing it wrong, right. Or we're, we're hurting somebody in one way or another. Uh, it, it's yeah. It, it's no matter what, degree of rule we change it's still someone's gonna get hurt right and or, so it but right now it's i feel like it's just like the door's wide open it's like come on in sure sure well but I mean, I he's, mean, he's trying to he, apply he's legally, trying to right? he's trying to say no but, yeah but, but yeah. let me tell you this okay if he doesn't get the application he can just stay here and he'll be on an expired visa and that's something like I think there are more people coming in the country that way than than uh, than through the border is these expired visas. Yeah. I think we had, we went over this, and so it's just like, and that's what a ton of them are doing, right? And it's yeah, like, but but we do track a fair number of them down and kick them out of the country. It's usually right? when they get arrested, right? If they get arrested, we see they're on an expired visa, and then when yeah. then we could kick them out if if they're... so. It's like yeah, keeps his nose clean, they'll be fine. Uh, no, and he did. He did actually. Marry. He did get asylum status, right? And he eventually got a green card. He's working here in the U.S. He's all above board. Everything's legal. But for yeah. a period there, right, he was technically yeah. in the country illegally until he had applied for asylum status. And then once they investigated, so once they begin the investigation, he's here legally. Right. So there was like a very small window where he was technically here in the country illegally. But once the investigation begins, he's fine to stay here while they decide whether he deserves asylum status. And he did get it. So, uh, but I think that, you know, that gets to that human rights issue of um, right now, our position is no, you know, and I don't think that's true for everybody. Obviously, if people get on a plane, they land here and then they say, I want asylum status. Okay, they're in the country, right? We're not going to kick them back out. Um, but there are a lot of people who are, tr they get to the border particularly the Southern border and say, I want to apply for asylum. Yeah. And we're saying, okay, do it in Mexico. Right. 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 Hmm. I don't know. I mean, I, I think, and, and I'm not trying to say there's a right or wrong answer here. I'm right. I think it's really complicated because, okay, we can't probably take too many, you know, people, I get that, but what if their life is genuinely in danger? right now. For sure. And someone, this is what I said, this is what I said before about the abortion thing, right? We they passed this abortion thing and I was like, for the most part, no one's lives are going to change, but there's, but there's going to be a few edge cases and they're going to get a lot of media attention. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be some girl, 14 year old girl that, you know, had to keep a baby from a rapist or something like that. Right. And it's going to make the news. And like, and then this is the exact same thing, right? It's like, 
a whole bunch of people are going to lie and say they need asylum, right? When they don't really need it. You can change the rule and they have to be outside and there's going to be legitimate people that are threatened, that are going to be killed. That it's going to hurt them, right? It's yep. going to hurt them. And uh, that that's going to... Um, and so, but it's it's either that or we take 10 times the amount of just people coming in that are lying to us, right? And it's just like, you draw, you, you got to draw a line somewhere, right? Hmm. And like, I'm just saying like, neither, that's what I was kind of getting at. It's like, neither of those answers are right. They're both, they're both wrong. <laughs> just, Interesting. In yeah. Okay. Well, I think that, that kind of runs the gamut on the things that I had. Uh, I think it is a tricky question. Um yes. Any other thoughts you want to add? Any wrap up? Uh, we didn't plan out a wrap up or anything, right? We're just like, yeah, we're done, done, Mer. it's over, podcast over. No, that's it, done, <laughs> boom, <there. laughs> podcast over. <laughs> okay, uh, and I think that's fine. So um, obviously, we should probably reach out uh, to people who have been listening. So our listeners out there in the ether, right? If you're okay with this new format, if you're okay with Tom and I just uh, chatting about these political issues, because Tom and I are both interested, uh, let us know what you think. Um, and what, tune in next time? Yeah, and leave a comment and just be like, hey, yeah. I really like this new format, or just tell us what you think. That's what I'd like to hear is uh, which form we've tried a few different things. I'd love to hear what you liked and what uh, what you don't like. Just be Perfect. Honest. Yeah, I like that. Okay. See you next time. Uh, Tom, look, we don't always agree when it comes to politics, um, but if there's one thing that we do agree on, it's that there's only one way to clean up after going to the bathroom, and that's with a Lux bidet. Listen, I've been using bidets forever, all right? And Lux is the best, all right? So, I mean, I've got like the little squatty potty thing and the bidet. It's like a whole experience. It's it's Actually, it's probably one of the highlights of the entire day. But like, it gets me clean and it gets me ready to uh, talk politics in a civilized manner. Yeah, no, I agree with you on that. Um, Every time that I use a toilet, it doesn't have a potato. When I go to a friend's house, you know, I just don't use their toilet, first of all. But uh, that's about as uncivilized as it gets. So uh, civil conversations demand civil hygiene practices. That's why everyone should get a bidet. And just to be clear, right? We, we want to make, make it clear. Listeners can get their own Lux Bidet with 10% off by ordering at luxbidet.com and using our promo code FCBG10, Finding Common Battlegrounds 10. Uh, and the last thing that we want to say, uh, Lux is supporting this podcast, uh, but they don't side one, they don't support one side or the other. They support civil conversations and clean butts. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Finding Common Battlegrounds. The music is by Ben Sound. The views expressed in this podcast are those of the participants and not those of their employers. For more information or more episodes, you can find us at findingcommonbattlegrounds.com. What do you think? If anything, it was fun to chat. Yeah. But I mean, uh, I, I actually like that, right? I mean, it, um, I, you know, and I have to wonder to, to be, to be like completely frank and honest here, the roughly two years that we've spent like fighting about some of these issues, I wonder if that's actually softened us enough that now we can actually have this conversation and like not be offended and not go at each other. <laughs> um, that, that maybe at some level, like the podcast worked for us. Now we can actually just have like friendly conversations and not like lose our minds about politics. Right. Yeah. Uh, right. I think feeling like, like it's, it's okay to say that Biden's all right. And that you were like, we're that Ryan's not going to be like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, or me yeah, pointing out that, I, you know, I win. Right. Yeah. Me right. pointing out that Democrats in New York City are busing migrants to the border. And I'm like, they're a bunch of hypocrites. Right. So right. I'm being critical of my side and you're totally getting that. And you're being critical of your side too. Right. Though, so, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it did work. Totally. Everyone should do a podcast with their, with their political nemesis uh, <laughs> for a few years. <laughs>
So that's what it's going to take, right? To to break down this political divide, everybody has to start a podcast with someone on it's the like other side. Of lock, yeah, lock yourselves <laughs> in some room with somebody for for two years. It's only but, two years, but it'll work. Kind of though. I mean, I think because you yell and scream, and eventually, you know, you 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 can only circle a subject so much, right? And it's like, okay, we don't agree on this. Yeah, moving on. Yeah, move on. 